Hello and welcome back to the PaleoCast Gaming Network and for the first time on the channel we're actually going to be looking at a mod today, specifically the Prehistoric Flora mod for Minecraft. Minecraft is open source so there are basically loads and loads of mods for it. Unfortunately a lot of the ones we'd be interested in are kind of the same. You know there's so much diversity to ancient life but we still just keep getting T-Rex, Triceratops, Brachiosaurus. It's, it's kind of plain and it's kind of overdone I guess at this point. But using this mod we can actually travel back in time using these spooky portals over there to the Paleozoic, to eras before dinosaurs which is fantastic because it lets us talk about some really cool obscure stuff. So this is the Carboniferous period, we've got some really dense vegetation as you can see and yeah it was thanks to all this increased photosynthesis that meant there was a lot more oxygen in the atmosphere at this time than any other point in Earth's history and this led to all sorts of interesting things like giant insects which you can see a, uh, one of resting up there and it also meant that even wet vegetation would have been flammable. We can tell from fossils and layers of charcoal that wildfires were extremely common at this time and I bring this up because I'll be honest I was kind of disappointed that starting a fire doesn't just instantly engulf the entire forest. If the creator of this mod is watching for some reason like add that please I, I that would be cool. We can go even further back to the Devonian. This is one of my all-time favorite geological eras. Uh, let's see, vegetation is a little less dense here. Oh, something I forgot to mention, by the way. There's no grass in any of these time periods. Grass is actually a pretty recent... Um, they really they evolved uh, not too long after the end of the Cretaceous, I think. So, yeah. Anyway, this is when trees and forests first evolved. Trees have existed for hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs. And we've talked before about the impact the arrival of forests had on marine life, uh, as all the productivity and nutrients on the surface ran off out into the ocean, basically overfeeding uh, marine algae, which we've actually got some here. How cool is that? Um, but yeah, this nearly depleted the ocean of its oxygen. Oh, the best thing about the Devonian, though. Oh, no, it's swimming away from us. I can't wait to show you these fish, they're amazing. And then finally, this is a sort of vague, the game just refers to it as like Ordovician slash Silurian. Uh, it's kind of weird, we have no plant life on land and no soil either. It's very quiet and almost kind of creepy as I imagine it would have been if you were to step back to this time period. I also just spotted some stromatolites. I'm not going to go too much into detail here as I'm planning another video that will be all about these things, but they're basically mounds of sediment created by bacteria that have, um, well basically they've been around for billions of years. Again, we've had this weird theme of oxygen in this video, I just realized, but uh, anyway, this bacteria, or at least their ancestors, are believed to be responsible for oxygenating the planet three and a half billion years ago because they were photosynthetic. But yeah, like I say, we will talk about them uh, in the future. I have a cool plan to show you the other effects that they had on the planet. Um, and if we go on beneath the water, we've got this enormous coral reef and there's a jellyfish over there. During this period, this is basically where most of our life was, down in the ocean. So yeah, for a work in progress mod, this is pretty incredible. It adds so much to the game. Um, question is, what should we do with it? Well. I thought for a while about trying to like survive in the different time periods, but like it, it just didn't really work. It was very slow and not very interesting. However, I am a huge fan of the show Prehistoric Park, where Nigel Marvin and his team went back in time and basically built enclosures for these amazing extinct animals to save them from extinction. Most of the animals that have been added to this version of the game live underwater, so I thought we could sort of build our own prehistoric aquarium. Does that sound cool? I think that sounds very cool. Alright, so full disclosure, I adore this game. I love Minecraft so much. I find it so relaxing. This game has gotten me through so much of my degree and my research, so it's extra weird having some of the animals that I've actually worked on to be added to the game, if that makes sense. See, for someone who actually works on fossil fishes, I've not really been to a lot of aquariums before. I actually live really close to one, but I always find it a bit dodgy there's something there's something off about it I'm not quite sure um so yeah I'm not really sure what they're supposed to look like at first I was going to make it really modern but then there's an artist I really love called Devin L Kurtz I'll put a link in the description and they make this really cozy artwork with like giant whales and sharks and stuff and I'm basically thinking of emulating <laughs> their style I think okay so here's an annoying thing about this mod because you have to like 
to, to install it, you have to downgrade your Minecraft account. So I'm basically playing the game as it was a couple of years ago, which means I can only use blocks that were available at that time, which is going to be super frustrating not being able to use some of the newer, more useful stuff. Okay, that's going to be... That's going to be a bit weird. I'm going to have to try and get used to that. I'm not really sure how I'm going to edit this yet. I think I'll cut out the majority of the actual building. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, but so far, I am liking this. This is looking pretty cool. Also, I know it looks super ugly now. I know. I will eventually build like a, a facade over it, if that makes sense. I'm just assuming these are like um, facsimile rocks, I guess. So since it's our first tank, I think we should put the Ammonites in here. Um, they're so iconic, they're so amazing. But what I love about this mod is we don't just have one generic Ammonite like you would in most games. We have over a dozen different species of all shapes and sizes. How cool is this? We've got some really little ones and some really huge ones. I also just noticed as well that they've nailed the way they sort of swim backwards, I guess, you know, pushing themselves along, uh, blowing out of this little opening here, there, uh, this little siphon, I think it's called. And that's such a great attention to detail. I love it. Oh, look at this one. It's got like an uncoiled shell. Yeah, these are called um, heteromorph ammonites. So ammonites, um, towards the end of their very long reign, uh, in the end of the Cretaceous, they started taking on all sorts of weird forms. And I don't really think there's a consensus on why they did this, but it's cool that they added this. I like it. Okay, I am stupidly happy with where this is going. I thought it was going to look really weird, but this is its actually looking quite good. Um, I'm not sure how long I want each episode to be, so I'm going to be very quick. But I basically want to make this next tank right away because this is the bit I'm most looking forward to. This is, this is like seriously awesome. All right, so you might be like a little bit underwhelmed, but this is the reason why I wanted to do this video because these are Minecraft versions of the fish that I worked on, fossils that I found. They're called astracoderms. They're armored jawless fish. They're some of the earliest vertebrates that ever lived, and even stranger, they have an external skeleton made of bone. It's some of the earliest bone in the fossil record that we actually inherited from them. Bone is a really useful adaptation that we kind of take for granted. It provides defense from predators that lived at this time, like giant sea scorpions. We literally have fossils of these fish with puncture wounds in them from where they're chelicerase to grab at them but bone can also heal really well and really quickly. We find fossils of bone that have healed after an injury all the time. We also believe that it may have acted like a backup reserve for important elements like calcium and phosphates, which are essential uh, for these animals to grow. And also, like I said, they are jawless. Fish hadn't evolved jaws yet, so to eat, they would sort of sieve around in the floor for bits of rotting plants and all sorts. It's very weird. Friend of the show, Yara Haridi, who also works on these fishes and has found this amazing technique to actually visualize the structure, the cellular structure of their bones, which is just awesome. Yeah, she calls them uh, a bunch of mud slurpers, <laughs> which I just love. All right, I'm actually going through this quite quickly. So one more tank. Um, I'm really enjoying this, if you can't tell. Oh, I know exactly what block I want. It's a, one of the best blocks in the game. Oh my god, it looks amazing. And so in this tank, we'll be adding Promissium, which is a type of Conodont. And oh my goodness, look at them go. They're so darn wiggly. That's amazing. I love how they move. That's great. Uh, anyway, Conodonts, super duper weird, as you can plainly see. But they are also exceptionally important to paleontologists everywhere and geologists and basically anyone who works in deep time. They are again extremely early vertebrates, and uh, well, we've talked before about how the fossil record is biased. It favors organisms with harder body parts. So not only does it mean that animals like jellyfish are a lot less likely to be fossilized than something with a shell or a skeleton, but it means that of those creatures that do preserve, only their hard parts are gonna make fossils, only their bones or their shell. Like for instance, we have hundreds of thousands of fossil ammonite shells, but we only recently found fossils of their soft tissue, their little squishy uh, faces. While for conodonts, their eel-like bodies fossilize unbelievably rarely. But their teeth, holy hell, do conodont teeth fossilize. We literally have millions of them. In fact, we have so many of them, we can actually use them to calibrate the geological timeline because Conodont teeth fossilize really easily, bound to find them. Not only that, but their teeth evolved in very distinct, easily recognized and easily identifiable ways. And they're found all over the world, and all of these things makes them perfect index fossils. 
So when you next look at the geological timeline, you see all the little divisions that break up the different time periods. Um, a lot of these are actually defined by when certain Conodont species went extinct and we stop finding their teeth in the sedimentary record. So yeah, well done Conodonts, I guess. 